All right, brethren, a Sabbath. <laughs> what a Sabbath and what a day is before the Sabbath. I don't know how about you, but we have had plenty of rain in this part of the world. Very few sunny day, well, very few sunny hours actually, rather than days. And that was our lot for the before the start, official start of the summer, which started officially five days ago or four days ago, 21st of June it was. In any case, um, it's uh, the June is coming to an end. July is coming up in the middle of July, a day before the uh, uh, just the day before the anniversary of founding of the Library Hope of Israel. I hope to deliver on the Sabbath 15th of June to deliver some kind of I don't know how to call it inaugural speech for the Hope of Israel, in which I should outline why we got formed and uh, uh, what we are all about. And I will try to keep it simple. I'll try to call on God's people for their unity around Jesus Christ, unity in the truth and spirit. And I'll remind everyone that we still have the work, the task ahead of us. Uh, the task is uh, to spread the good news. I would rather consider it more useful and uh, probably less expensive when it comes to money that we use our personal examples for spreading the good news and uh, targeting really the, those people who are really those few in this world who might be interested in God's word. In any case, that's that's just what I've been thinking all about. I've been thinking how to make that inaugural speech. Uh, you know that I'll just not make it accusatory. Uh, we just had to do what we had to do based on our conscience. And um, all the facts will just come into the fore. And they're coming already into the fore anyway. All the facts are come and they're going to be shocking indeed. But, um, well, we just, uh, the, 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 as time goes on, I'm realizing that uh, we just moved out on time. We just uh, did not want to have God's word being, uh, how can I say, well, I cannot say be be tarnished by the bad and horrible examples, and we've done we've done many things that we could in the meantime. Uh, radio is going on, as you know, 24 hours, seven days a week. I have to check. We started something in Spanish, but we had a lady who left our group, and so uh, I don't know if uh, i don't know what is going on in spanish but we'll make some progress hopefully in french and other languages and we're going to do it not well basically cost free because of the good vision that uh, randy freeze and i had uh, other than that we can start with the site and everything else we're not rushing into anything but we are doing all that we can one thing that i wanted to address with you today and I've been building, in a sense, a vision here in Serbia. There are plenty of these people, these guys who are here, the members here. They're not really, they grew up in nominal Christianity. They're not really much educated about the Bible. They don't have any, you might say, Church of God background, unlike me and some of you. But I've been trying to um, develop with them vision. There is one verse in Proverbs that without vision, people perish. And I've been trying to build a vision about the Church of God. What is the Church of God? Who are we as God family? What is our goal? And so on. So um, one of the things I wanted to address with you today is God family. And also the, uh, oh, I'll say that word that the uh, those who don't like us just prefer governance. Right. You know, there have been governance, these, these words, but governance and governance and governance and government and, you know, almost obsession with government. Well, government in, God, in God's word, in God's word <laughs> is pretty simple. And one of the lies that, of course, our, our enemies try to spread about us is that we have no government of God. We seem to be like a, dis, like a disorganized group of people who just have no government well that's false of course of course that we have government brethren how do you think that we operate anyway we do operate you know under the under the rules of the government of god given in the word of god and the government of god is of course it is from the top down but it's always from the it's in love from the top down for the benefits of those who are being ruled by that same government 
not for the benefits of those who have been in our former church affiliation doing all kinds of misuses, abuses, and so on and so forth. Yeah. It's done for the benefits of those being being governed. And the government of God, I would prefer, that my preferred model is not mine, and it's not something that I've invented. It is based on God family model, if you wish. There is one verse in Peter, I think, which says to all of us Christians, submit to one another. Interesting, I'm very, I'm very uh, intrigued how very little is being quoted, you know, by the... Um, by those who who advocate top-down government and all of, all of those things. Well, we're supposed to, you know, uh, submit to one another, of course, in brotherly kindness and love. And that's how the Church of God should have been governed uh, always, should have been governed, you know, like that everywhere and in all the ages. Now, uh, that verse is not very much, you know, liked or quoted but i'll quote it and i think in my inaugural speech i will indeed quote that uh very verse and remind god's people that we are to be ruled by you know we are to be ruled within ourselves as a god god family model regardless even of age let alone you know sex male or female we are to, to, to submit to one another in mutual love and support and that's how God's church should be governed. I won't spend much money on those who were, you know, on those others uh, who we left, where the government of God was supposed to be, you know, one man without any checks and balances. One man, we didn't even have a treasurer, could you believe that? Which every, every organization in the world has a treasurer, be it governed from the top down or from the, from the down up or from the left to the right or right to the left. So uh, it's all done in coordination. Let me tell all of you who are part of all your hope of Israel. It's done in coordination with me. Everything finances. Of course, I'm not here to order what should be financed or not. But we just come together. We we just uh, you know those the top leadership basically being Terry Nelson who who is in charge of Africa. Thankfully, he has a wonderful wonderful chief how we call him chief counsel <laughs> all those silly stupid titles that mean absolutely nothing is the character that means you know for a person not his title so we have a chief uh, chief assistant or chief counselor a wonderful person from malawian government and we are so proud of him and we're so proud to have uh, to enjoy uh, a trust of a government of a nation that's that's a great privilege and I'm sure that God is going to bless Malawian nation both now and even more, of course, in the kingdom of God when Jesus Christ returns. And um, Terry Nelson works close in cooperation with me. He submitted to me. And, of course, he's doing things very well in Africa, arranging things in Africa. So he visited Africa more than I. He is acquainted with their customs and stuff more than I. He has discovered all this deep corruption in Africa with forces help and I'm so happy about that uh, and uh, consequently we had to make the only right decision which was to remove from that curse that curse that as far as I can hear keeps going on all the time it hasn't stopped you would think that somebody would stop it at least somebody would be rational but no obviously not if that's how people imagine the government of God well, I think they're very very wrong anyway but that's how the government of God was, you know, in our former affiliation. You know, pump thousands of dollars into uh, into one precise area. It doesn't matter that somewhere else, whether it be in Australia, Serbia, New Zealand, uh, Spain, Trinidad and Tobago, you name it, somebody may go bankrupt. It doesn't matter. No, no, no. Pump some more money. I hear, I just heard before the services that... Uh, Six thousand, six thousand more dollars was sent was sent to a person who is on the run, by the way, in his country. But of course, obviously, the top leaders have no clue about that. He is on the run because the government is going to arrest him and charge him with various numerous charges based on the Malawian law. And of course, all that the Malawian government is going to charge him is based also on the law of God, and is so tragic. And it's so sad that we have come to that. You know, we as a Church of God, 
speaking of the governance after all we did encounter problems various problems in the past but uh, not problems of this kind problems of this kind when people try to combine which witchcraft and <laughs> true christianity of course you cannot combine it but uh, people try it nevertheless and uh, this is a new relatively new phenomena and of course in the mean all those who want to do some evil would consult witchcraft there is no other reason really and how do i know it because we have plenty of witches here in europe and in my nation and you know it is so funny when sometimes you have people on the black continent thinking that they could fool all of us and that they're just so different and so smarter than us and so whatever you know i tried to explain to black people one day that i grew up in what is called what we might consider european africa you know my country was a european africa because of poverty because of civil wars because of floods because of you name it and as i said to some of the leaders in the kenyan congregation i said you're nothing special for having had all of those things happening in your countries we had all the same here and we still have it we have a war in europe is anybody shocked about it yes we have a war in europe because russia and ukraine are in europe and let me just inform you that because of that war and because their main exports of wheat and various other commodities the food prices have skyrocketed in this country we had inflation that reached about between 30 and 40 percent to such an extent that the government recently here at least had to take some measures and announce some measures to kind of you know bridle inflation and and kind of bring it down to eight percent they said brethren you know being in whatever part of the world doesn't mean that you are more or less privileged when it comes to worldly commodities who cares about them now we have to care for one another when there is real need but the government of god you know if the government of god is to pump thousands of of, of 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 dollars so that somebody can you know have a luxury life somewhere that's that's not the government of god and i'm very sorry about that anyway but the family of god is how we are to be ruled and the family of god is how it is going to be ruled in the church in, in the hope of israel of course i'm on the top of the government of israel in the hope of israel not israel the nation but in the hope of israel but that does not mean that the rest of you are not important i just whenever i have to make especially main decisions i would always love to consult all of you or some of you at least and that's why i'm so glad that with one world government which is malavian government we have a close cooperation and to me the greatest recognition is that the government of malawi considered us to be true christians and that's why they registered us right away with the help, of course, of our friend Forster. But nevertheless, we are recognized as true Christians in that country, brethren. To me, that's the greatest recognition I can have. I don't care about any other titles, any other, I don't know, you called accolades, uh, whatever. The fact that ruling men in a nation recognize their true Christians in hope of Israel is to me the greatest compliment of all and you know just like that government doesn't behave like at least not from i've seen just like that government behaves in a very cooperative and inclusive way that's the same how it should be the government of god in in god's church yes of course there are people who make final decisions yes of course sometimes you have to you know think about certain big decisions but nevertheless the ruling model yes we do have we do have for those who love hierarchical government in hope of israel alexander which is the presiding elder and he is on the top of that government but he closely cooperates with everyone with terry nelson who is in charge for africa with uh, randy freeze who is also the, uh, the the treasurer and i myself closely cooperate with our two deacons now in serbia and i closely cooperate with everyone because inclusive to being inclusive and inclusiveness in what peter tells us the apostle peter tells us who was the main apostle as you know and many consider him still the main apostle the inclusiveness means the inclusiveness means that we submit to one another in brotherly love as he commands us 
Now, speaking of church as God family, speaking of the this ruling model, I first want you to turn to Second Samuel chapter twenty-three. Second Samuel chapter twenty-three, verse two. Now, let's see one example of true, you might say, governance or government of God, however you want to call it. And again. It just fascinates me how those who are just, uh, whose mouths are full of the government of God, hierarchical government, very rarely quote certain things from the Bible that shows us how the true government actually works in action. Second Samuel 23 verse 2, The Spirit of the Lord spoke to me, spoke by, spoke by me, and his word was on my tongue. Brethren, this is David. So from this one is clear that what David is going to say is of God. It is not of David. And speaking of those who boast about the government of God and, 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 and being the carers of the government of God, well, is it the government of God that you just spread a lot of lies? Incredible lies you spread to the body of believers and you think that you are doing the government of God. Absolutely, absolutely false. Verse 3, the God of Israel, oh, the God of Israel said, the rock of Israel spoke to me. Oh, so brethren, here the spirit of the Lord is indicating that what was given to David in terms of understanding was directly from God of Israel and related to salvation as far as Israel was concerned and also God's faithfulness to a covenant agreement. And then continues in verse 3. He who rules over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God. Ho, ho. Fear of God. I've, since, I've seen so much pride and ego trips with some people who think that there's something, you know including this criminal from Malawi sending me he sent me once a message I think some of you have seen it warning you I'm warning you he was warning me I was thinking oh my I was thinking here is a transgressor of God's law transgressor of the law of his country here is the man who is doing evil to his own kinsmen in his own country and he was trying to warn me and obviously he was trying to threaten me but of course brethren I'm not threatened I just responded to him. I said, may you, with all the demons you have brought into the church of God, may you just be found out. And may God just, you know, just, just get, uh, get away from me, I said, and get away from the church of God. Hopefully, brethren, we are going to see some earthly justice, you might say. But, of course, since God, the Bible tells us that we are, the Bible tells us that we are to submit to the governments of the world, then that means that... Uh, we will do it, and hopefully the government of that particular country is going to bring some justice to this terrible person who has tried to use witchcraft to kill his brothers and, 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 and grab family property, try to kill his ex-wife, try to uh, use his, uh, uh, his son uh, to be like a conductor of that murder through a witchcraft and all of those horrible things horrible things we never experienced in the past brethren we did have some problems in the past now let me tell you i have said it this once but i'll say it once again in the old worldwide church of god under mr armstrong there was a there was a man in switzerland bernard andres who spoke french language he was in charge of i think east africa or at least he was in charge of rwanda and you might remember that in 90s there was a horrible civil war in rwanda and this man even though he was in he was an elderly gentleman he just what he did was he just got a big bag full of water and 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 and, and food and he went around rwanda going from one refugee camp to the other seeking the church members what an example of a christian but however that man later i heard in Rwanda, had to put out four deacons out of the church, brethren, because those four deacons resorted to using witchcraft. Somebody could not be healed. Somebody was not healed. And they resorted to using witchcraft for the sake of healing of this person. Had to put them out of the church. And that was the first time that I ever heard that somebody tried to use witchcraft for 
setting goal. A little did I know that many years later, in the church where I was affiliated with and where I was where I was a part of the hierarchical government, that I would have to face. A person who is above me in that hierarchy doing witchcraft and bringing, you know, those witches by night to his home area so that people would not be known. And yet, still, they were still informed about him doing it. And another one in another country, in this case in Malawi, doing exactly the same. Little did I think that I would ever have to encounter witchcraft. And even worse, brethren, this time it was even worse. Because now I was facing with all the curses that witchcraft can bring to a church organization and I was an elder in it and I was supposed to do something about it I guess but even worse the man who was supposed to hear me and trust me he just refused rejected all the all the facts presented by me and by other members in good standing I did hear rumors about the use of witchcraft in Kenya, but I never had any proofs. And this time I had to face Kenya and I had to face Malawi and Mozambique. Prior to that, there was a black magic discovered in Mozambique. Brethren, this is amazing. I thought that those four deacons were perhaps an isolated incident. But then I had to face to be faced with the fact that it's a common practice. Obviously a common practice among those who are supposed to be Christians. Well, rest assured, all of you, no matter how much they might have the name Church of God, Church of God, Church of God, since they're using witchcraft and doing that, they're just false Christians. False Christians! Just like that. And I realized then that I was in association with false Christians. But the false Christians who were favored by the top men in the government of God within the church and who was pumping thousands, well, I've just learned how many thousands of money he pumped in the meantime before this. If he recently pumped five to six thousand, five to six thousand uh, US dollars, how many, how much more money he pumped in there? Oh my goodness. I'm just wondering. Over the last 10 years, 11, 12, however many years, how much money was pumped in, 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 I'm not, I'm not, and don't, don't mis misunderstand me. I'm not sad that it was pumped to Africa. Sure. It's okay. Be it pumped to Africa. That's all right. But if those money, that money was used properly to make those people self-sustained, to improve their lot, to, buy fertilizers for them, to buy organic seed, and I keep mentioning this organic seed, and I hope that one of these days we'll have a project called Organic Malawi, and then hopefully with the hope of Israel we can just have this, those seeds spread all over the country. Even though the climate is not like in Kenya, which is a perfect, perfect climate, it's an eternal spring, still, I still hope that even in Malawi with some little work and protection i'm hope i hope and i believe that the whole country could at least alleviate a bit of those hunger problems with organic seeds the crop may not be as abundant as with with gmo seeds but nevertheless it'll be clean it'll be healthy and it is not going to poison the soil and human bodies in any case Speaking of government, brethren, I'm not the one who does not make decisions when the decisions are to be made. And back to this witchcraft, I was faced with, 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 with choice to stay with those people and sustain whatever curses I might or just to leave. And I told my friends, we cannot, I cannot stay here and as for you, as you wish. But if you stay, you might be exposed to all kinds of curses there. And thankfully, the local congregation here was shocked, of course, at first. And then they said, oh, no, 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 we are, we are not going to. We know what we are because we live in a nation with a plenty of witches all around. Yes, there are witches in the white nations. Don't be shocked, all of you. There is nothing new under heaven. 
They're witches of different kind, but we know that they're witches. You've got witchcraft everywhere under different guys. So don't be surprised. And don't think any of you that is just something so unique for your nation. No, it's not. And then several individuals, others, came over. Then we had a whole movement in Malawi of church members who didn't want to stay under that cursed hierarchy of false Christians who pretend to have the government of God and who spread lies all the time. Lies all the time. Well, you know what is so funny, brethren? We catch them in every lie. Yes, because we are government of God with the hope of Israel. Oh, interesting, isn't it? Nobody knew about it. Well, now you know. But I'm not a dictator, you know, and I'm not somebody showing off to the world. Look, oh, I'm in the head of the hope of Israel. Oh, you better, you better believe me and obey me because I am now something important. Brethren, I'm not. I'm not. I know that I know that God calls the worst of the world, and I know that I'm just absolutely nothing. I can just use my goodwill. I can use some of my creative ideas with the help of other people to improve, hopefully, what I can. In a wonderful little nation of Malawi, I understand this is Satan's world, and I know we cannot do much, but we can at least improve perhaps hunger issues or, or organic seed issues or, I don't know, something else there might be. You know, we all as true Christians can at least rise up one day and say, let's clean up the country because people have thrown plenty of rubbish, just like they do in Kenya. You know, they just play, they just have rubbish everywhere. It took me about four days when I was there to realize that those people didn't have communal communal services i was like wait a second and it happened because i was on a motorbike in one of the cities we were transporting i can't remember exactly from point a to point b and i had some waste papers in my pocket and i thought okay i'll just throw it into a into a dustbin as the british say or into rubbish or into however you call it we have, we call them here in Serbia, containers for rubbish containers, you know. And then you throw it in the rubbish containers and then community service lorries or trucks come once or twice a week, empty those containers and then it goes, goes into circle. Then I thought, wait a second. Wait a second. I said, wait, where are these dustbins? I was like, oh, how can I get rid of this rubbish? Then I thought. Have I seen every? Have I seen dustbin anywhere in this country? Yes, I've seen in the capital of Nairobi when there are just some posh, posh and luxurious hotels, obviously built for foreigners. So yeah, there's some of some of the dustbins there in the city, but ne nowhere else in the countryside. I was like, wait a minute, have I seen a communal lorry? No. Wait a second, I said. A country with this many members, a country with these members, I mean citizens, a country with, with this high population does not have communal service. That's awful. But you know what, friends? Speaking of the government and making decisions and taking actions, oh, well, we are going to make sure that our members, at least in Kenya, if we are going to have any, our members in Malawi, our members in Mozambique, are going to make at least their own kind of communal service and they're not they're going to stop throwing rubbish everywhere and creating unhealthy unhealthy uh, environment for everyone oh yes we're going to be yes because yes the government that's how the government of god works to improve the lot of people not for those to be buying new cars and, you know, driving off and showing off how well off they are because they're supposedly, oh, they're supposedly, I say, Church of God members. Yes, indeed. You know, many have come to us, brethren, hypocrites. They crept in, it says in Jude, they crept in unawares. Exactly. And every time we find them, be sure, brethren, that I, on the top of a government in hope of Israel, am going to remove them quickly and efficiently. I'm not going to allow thugs and, 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 and plunderers and dishonest people and liars to be in hope of Israel because 
those people their places in the place in the lake of fire not in the church of god but nevertheless we know that there are many people there who can creep in unawares no no and so back to the point everywhere we can improve the lot we will if a country doesn't have communal service we will organize it in our places where we live God's people are going to be preaching the gospel in Africa and everywhere by their personal example. That's the most powerful preaching of the gospel. That's why we were recognized by a worldly government of the small country of Malawi as true Christians. What a wonderful recognition. The best we have had any time. And I'm so happy of that. I'm so proud of that. And everywhere I speak about the hope of Israel, I say, look. Look, I said, the government of a nation, of a worldly nation, has recognized us as true Christians. That's the best gospel message we could have sent to the whole nation of Malawi. Second Samuel, we read chap uh, chapter 23, we read in verse 3, the Spirit of the Lord indicated it was what was given to David was indeed from God of Israel himself. But we also read that the ruler over man must be just, ruling in the fear of God. And a good question for everyone. All the leaders now, wherever you are, is do you have fear of God? Oh, there is one, you know, there is one pretending to be evangelist for a whole continent. I've seen a bunch of lies, brutal lies, in which, obviously, you see that that person has no fear of God. Brutal lies presented to his superior, and then brutal lies being spread to the rest of the world or to all the other believers. How sad. Verse 4, And he shall be like the light of the morning when the sun rises, a morning without clouds, like the tender grass springing out of the earth, by clear shining after rain. Verse 5. Although my house is not so with God, yet he has made with me an everlasting covenant. Covenant with David. <laughs> How many people in the world know about the covenant of David, brethren? Other than us. Why did we watch and why do we still watch the British royal family closely? Why do we pray God save the king as well. Why do we do that, brethren? Because we know that on that throne there is David's descendant. It's part of the covenant that this dark world does not understand. Everlasting covenant, order in all things and secure, for this is all my salvation and all my desire. And he not make it. Will he not make it increase? Will he not make it increase, brethren? And if I remember, Malawi is also part still of the British uh, British Commonwealth. I think so is Kenya. And so are various other nations. The British Commonwealth is fulfillment of God's prophecy. <laughs> it was God's providence. And yes, we are going to teach people of Malawi that that's a blessing. And others as well, brethren, because it is. And you know what? Speaking of identity... We do understand the identity of Israel. And we do have the key of David. We know where the David's house is today. And just to ask you, which church was given the key of David? And which church, brethren, in all of those seven does understand the key of David, which is the identity of modern Israel? Which church, brethren? Only one. A Philadelphian one. And we all here in this country, in my country, and I believe everywhere, all of you around the world, there was this, there was a, a recording of coronation of the latest king. And it was on the Sabbath, though. But somehow we just, we just managed. It was before our services. So it was just about on time before the services. We all sat, all, how many of us? There are five baptized and about five unbaptized. Remember, we all sat before our computers because the uh, our national TV would not. 
broadcast that event we sat here at our computers we found we found a a a, uh, a link and we watched it all of us here in serbia and i was watching it in a, in a in a house of a let me tell you this much let it be recorded yes for those who think that they're only Philadelphians and nobody else in the world is Philadelphian, only them. So one of them named themselves Philadelphia Church of God and the others say we're Philadelphia remnants and we're the only Philadelphia remnants. So oh, I just love all of you who are just so preposterous and thinking obviously that God can tell you and show you who exactly is Philadelphia and who is not. And let me tell you for the record that all of the, the whole Church of God in Serbia watched the coronation of King. And the guy who was next to me, he's not baptized. He's a lovely, lovely lad. A lovely lad. I happened to be visiting him at that time. So he just, uh, you know, found it. Uh, and, uh, and at one point he said to me, look, he said, he said, I would have never known. I would have never known where is the throne of David if it wasn't for you. And look at now, he says, he said to me, look, we're now watching the descendant of David being coronated on that throne. And he was so happy. And it was so moving to us. We were on the brink of tears. Only Philadelphians can feel that, brethren. Only Israelites, lost Israelites can feel that joy and exhilaration. And only Philadelphia Church of God has got the key of David. Yes, indeed. Oh, that I'm saying because of the you know comment that oh you know uh, hope of Israel cannot possibly be Philadelphia. Oh really? Oh really? Well, we were on the day of coronation. We were all Philadelphians, <laughs> and the only ones in Serbia probably because other people even if they watched the coronation, they did not realize the significance of it, the support of the Bible prophecy by it. But we knew who was King Charles. And we know it to this day. But the key of David was given to Philadelphians, you know. Not only do we know who is King Charles, but we know who are the Swedish people, who are, who are the English people, Scottish people, Welsh people, French people, you name it. We know it. One of my friends from Croatia is in love with a girl from Sweden, so he's now in Sweden. <laughs> and even he he's kind of messianic Jew rather than being a Christian but nevertheless he knows what I preach you know what he did he sent me the, the, the banner the ancient banner of Swedish kings <laughs> because he knew what it meant and what is on the banner on the royal banner of Swedish kings a doe female deer for you who may not understand English that well Female deer, yes, exactly. Look at the description of Naphtali in Genesis 49. And he said it to me. He said, this is amazing, he said. I said, I know. And he says, do you know what it means? I said, I know. I, you learned it from me. Yes, I know. I know. I'm the head of the hope of Israel. And I should know that. Then he sent me some other interesting information. He told me, for example, how very anti-Catholic <laughs> Swedish people are, even to this day. And then I said to him, look, I said, uh, can we do something? Look, you, you, your girlfriend speaks Swedish. I said, can we do something for Swedish people? Can we just make an article or two in Swedish? Can we just have my booklet on Constantine who imposed this false Christianity? Can we have it in Swedish language? He said, yes, of course. Now, if that is not all Philadelphian actions, if that's not a government of God in action, you tell me what is it? And then the other day he writes to me again. He said, look, in all our Balkan Peninsula, you are the only one preaching the good news, he said. <laughs> By that, he said, I mean you preach about restoration of Jerusalem, restoration of the kingdom of Israel. You're preaching about the coming wonderful kingdom of God that is going to rule over all the world. And you're the only one telling, telling people that. He said, no, none of these preachers I'm listening to, I listen to, tell about it. They seem to be making 
uh, they seem to be racing who is going to be the first one to say some bad news he says they just love to spread this bad news about destruction he said what is good news about that he said to me good news what is it about destruction of our neighbors our friends our families he said you are the only one who preached the good news of the coming kingdom i said to him my friend that's what hope of israel is all about it's going to be all about to the very end he's going to be preaching the good news yes about the kingdom of israel which is at the same time the kingdom of god yes he's going to preach about the identity of king charles he's going to preach about the identity and the fulfillment of prophecy through british commonwealth and the united states of america yes indeed he's going to be preaching about swedish people and their identity i said help me help me i said if you would help me to tell swedish people who they are and if that's not the government of god brethren i don't know what what else is it and if it's not philadelphian attitude well i don't know what is it but i know and i've been preaching this for years i'm the only one who has been preaching this for years that the only church of all those seven which does which is which does understand the identity of israel the only church is philadelphian church which means brethren that all those who might be a uh, remnant of philadelphia today will be aware of the king charles and who he is and also of the house of israel now if there were 10 people in serbia observing with knowledge and awareness coronation of the king now you tell me isn't that philadelphian spirit <laughs> you tell me and i warned I, I warned them before the coronation i said look for three things there look for the stone of destiny <laughs> remember the stone of destiny leah filed brethren the one that jeremiah brought to the british isles i said look for that and i said look for two three more things there'll be a bracelet there should be a ring and there should be a, a, a staff the three things that judah gave to tamar when you see those things i said you will make the connection and then listen to all the other prayers and stuff then of course there were references in the prayer of that priest you know well king charles by the way is the only one anointed by oil have you noticed that no other king in the world no other king no other kings other than the british kings are being anointed by the by the uh, by oil and of course what do you see when we had picture on the screen what i was looking for i was looking for the stone of destiny first there is a legend of course that every time somebody who was not entitled who sat on that stone the stone would protest and there was a legend that if the right person would sit on stone stone would make certain sound of pleasure those are legends i understand but brethren come on with god everything is possible so not what no no not not that in any case i looked for the stone of destiny there it was right there under the coronation chair and i said yes i'm like okay soon after that there they come with staff with ring and with a bracelet and i just said to my friend who was next i said here it is now you may just you know dispel all of that and say dismiss and say well so why, why why is the importance of that well the importance of that is to know the scriptures and the importance of that is that we know where is the house of david today and only philadelphians know that so well you just make your own decision and your own conclusion the conclusion of one of those who spreads lies about us was oh hope of israel cannot be po cannot possibly be philadelphian because they don't have the government of philadelphia really yes we do have government we do have government and what happens interesting enough the initiator of that government and that organization was a totally insignificant guy like myself yes indeed totally insignificant totally unknown but the one who did not want to tolerate being in association with witchcraft and false Christians, 
Because sadly, even the some kings of Israel in the past, when we read the Old Testament, we see that they were very much into witchcraft. Oh yes, King Manasseh was probably a case in point. Even though he repented later, he was restored. But when you read about King Manasseh, you, you read about the horror, horror movie. Horror movie, you know, with a horror, horrible story anyway. So, David, who's prayed here in Second Kings, chapter two, three, chapter two, twenty-three, sorry, and verse two, three, four, five, he refers back here to chapter seven and eight, where he's talking about God promising him and his household certain covenant promises, and the statement that David ruled with justice and righteousness. Remember, he who rules over man must be just, ruling in the fear of God. <laughs> oh, I know that my ministry and my eldership was questioned, you know, by various, you know, various people, especially those who tried to kind of uh, malign hope of Israel, and then they would just question, oh, yeah, you know, you're too young, you're not married, you're this, this, and yes, that's right. But nobody knows my family situation. Nobody knows the history of this nation in which I was growing up. Nobody knows how bloody and horrible was the falling apart of my country in which I was born, the country of Yugoslavia. So who, who is there? Who, are, who is anybody to judge? If one thing I'm happy for is that I'm not a dictator who just dictates you know, other people what to do. As I've seen, I've seen one doing that. Even the waiters and waitresses, I, 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 I try to act in, 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 in kindness and not issue them imperative words. Madam, madam, where are you? Why have you been, you know, and all those. I've seen it. Oh, yes, I've seen it in Kenya. Yes, of course, you guess it. I've seen it in Kenya. At least when I eat, I eat with closed mouth, you know, brethren. When I speak about myself, I try to be as modest as possible. Not to be telling my superior how hungry we are. And then the person telling me, somebody reminded me of that today. Serbian congregation reminded me of that. And then telling me how here in Africa, oh, you eat so, so little, he would say. Yes, brethren, I eat so little. I eat once a day. Because that's how much money I have. For once a day meal. And I'm happy with that. So what? And I'm not fat, and I'm not, you know, obese, and I eat once a day, yes. But then I have somebody who complains about constant hunger. Hunger in a country with eternal spring, telling me, oh, you, you eat so little. But I said, well, I said, it's enough for me. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> this is so different from us in Africa. You know, we here, here, we have breakfast, then we have brunch, then we have lunch, then in between we have some snacks, then, then we have dinner. He enlisted me. I had a lecture about a man who is supposedly in the government of God, brethren, telling me about five meals they have in Africa or in his country. And that was supposed to be something superior. Just like it was very superior. They had, oh, <laughs> you have only one or two children in Europe. And, you know, here, as many children as we have, you know, that's a, that's, that's a prestige. So, really? So, what, what is somebody supposed to do? Those of us who are poor in Europe, what are we supposed to do? Make social cases for our countries? Put our children through suffering? You've got no idea what persecution some of us who are poor went through in this country. In any case, yes, the government of God is in place, hierarchical government in hope of Israel. If you didn't know that, now you do, all of you who are our members, and the rest of the world will hear it hopefully uh, next month. And hopefully with much condensed story than this. But in any case, brethren, you may have, what is the problem is, sometimes there is a false government of God and there is a true government of God. Now, when all the facts come into the surface, people will have to make their decisions. And many people sometimes make decisions that they actually like, rather than what would be the right decisions. But, oh well, such is the case. In any case, the commentary of the Old Testament in regard to these Verses that we have just read 
especially verse 3, which says, uh, He who rules over men must be just ruling in the fear of God. It says, The meaning is a ruler over the human race will arise, a just ruler, and will exercise his dominion in the spirit of fear of God. And there will be blessings that will flow from that ruler. He shall be like the light of the morning when the sun rises. Oh, yes, indeed. Now we know that Christ fits this description. He is light, as John 1 says. At his return, it will be like the rising of the sun, as far as the light to humankind is concerned. But what we are told about David, brethren, the admonition of how one is to rule, flows into the human realm. The human ruler is to rule as Christ rules. The justice of the ruler is found in the fear of God and not in the huge belly he has or the commanding voice of imperative that he just you know uses or bribes that he does giving some crumbs to his people he's supposed to serve how tragic brethren how tragic and speaking of the government of god yeah I, i'm sorry these these things are not very pleasant and stuff but you know how tragic it is that a false evangelist, a false Christian, you know, gets money from the West and then he goes to a little wonderful small nation of Malawi trying to bribe the local congregations to stay with him. <laughs> Is that the government of God? That's what's happening. That's what's happening, you know, in our former affiliation, which claims to be the only true church of God, whose leader is the only true leader of the church of God, and all of that rubbish. No, he's not. I served faithfully seven years under his leadership and I was a faithful servant. And I've seen so many other things that had to be corrected within the church if the church was to fulfill its mission. But instead of that, I've only seen so much corruption, which I tried to rectify, but to no avail. He wouldn't listen. And I've experienced some other things, not only in Africa, but in other, from other people in other parts of the world, in America, in Australia, or from Australia rather than in Australia. In Australia, there were a lovely bunch of people that I kept a feast with in 2022. And speaking of the government of God, I motivated those people that we'd, move, that we'd drive to another feast site where I met my very good friend that whom I never knew in person, Martin, uh, Craig Martin White from Sydney, Australia, a marvelous worker in the field of God, a man who has been doing so much work that is just absolutely blows my mind away. The man who has been trying to maintain all the good traditions and the good legacy of Herbert Armstrong and his, those who were his co-workers. So I drove to that feast site. First I met him. And those who were with me met him, and he was so impressed with me that he invited me later to come, two days later, that I should come for barbecue in a certain place. In that place, there were plenty of people that are no longer affiliated, I think, with anyone, but they're just, uh, they happen to have to, to gather there in that part of, Aust of Australia to keep the feast. And of course, when about four other unknown men came in, of which one was a minister that stirred up quite a interest. And there was a lady that came to me and said, uh, four guys came and, uh, and one of them is a minister. Is that you? I said, yes, it's me. Dear. But I said, I'm not like those heavy-handed dictatorial ministers who believe that they are almost sitting next to God because they happen to be evangelists, ministers, whatever. I said, I'm here to bring peace and unity if possible. And I publicly apologized to all the church members who might have suffered abuse in the old WCG where there were plenty of people who just crept in unawares and plenty of very egocentric and 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 and, and, and high-headed you know ministers and i apologized in one of my sermon 
But in these people, I was sitting among these people, I said, friends, brethren, I apologize to you. Even though I was not part of WCG in Herbert Armstrong's time, I still apologize to you, nevertheless, on behalf of the small, persecuted, maligned Church of God that was always a small in number and always persecuted and scattered. On behalf of that church, true church, I do apologize to you for whatever you sustained. If I can do anything to rectify that, I will. There is one thing that I want to do is to reverse this scattering and fragment, fragmentation of God, of, of, of the body of Christ. I want to see people coming together in unity. How that psalm says, in sweet unity. Boy, when I was in 2017, there was a conference between Jews and uh, true Christians in, in Jerusalem. And I remember still the main rabbi of, of, of Israel, an elderly person who just stood up and he began reciting those verses in Hebrew and I recognized them. Even though I don't speak Hebrew, I recognized them and he would recite them in English and I cried so, so badly. That is what I want to see in the Church of God, if possible, brethren. And yes, as part of the government of God, I, 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 I promise to all of you publicly, I'll do all within my power to see unification of God's people and reversal of this scattering and fragmentation, which basically came, as I said in Australia, came as a result of human egos and human vanities because people don't want to submit to one another, you know. People want to be leaders. They want to be the ones who are obeyed and followed. Not me. I've said so many times, even to the church members in Serbia, brethren, I don't want to be you, my followers. I want to be here, part of a community where I follow Jesus Christ with all of you. And not only that, but when all of you are educated about the most basic things in the Bible, which includes the identity of Israel. That's why we are called the hope of Israel, because it's the hope of all nations. And yes, as a part of the government of God, I promise to God and I promise to all of God's people, I'll do whatever is within my power to see God's people united. Or at least part of God's people united. Because I said to those in Australia, and I'm telling, I'll tell that, Probably in my inaugural speech, brethren, we still have a work to do. The work is not over yet. Jesus Christ's word says to the very end, Mr. Armstrong died 30 years ago, three decades. In these three decades, we have seen all kinds of horrible things, including witchcraft and those who are trying to be pretending to be Christians while milking money from church organization. For their own benefits. Disgusting. That's not the government of God. Oh, they can just deceive. They're, 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 they're superior. How they're just having everything is funky dory. Everything is beautiful. Oh, things are working. Oh, open door in Africa. What a sham. The government of Malawi can testify. And we will one of these days. What an open door. It was all. Only now when the hope of Israel was finally, when, when, when rose, only then the true door has been opened. Yes, indeed. And basically believers of all that country, small country, fled. Fled to form hope of Israel. And the government of Malawi was so favorable, you know, 9th of March, there it was, registration. I'm like, incredible. We will celebrate it always as an organization. That will be our, 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 our day, 9th of March. When a when government of a small nation recognized, here are the true Christians, let's register them. We're working on registration in other countries as well. But Malawi happened to be the first. The light that all Christians are supposed to shine was first seen and recognized 
by the government of that small lovely country what a blessing that is and somebody's going to tell me we are not Philadelphia no. <laughs> and let me let me uh, let me say something else of all these big churches who have been spending so much money on a media and TV and all those things that human governments control as far as I know and under my direction we are the only one that have our own radio hope of Israel worldwide it's our radio in our hands we make the program and we spread that oh you know what it's a radio and it reaches the whole world 24 hours a day seven days a week and we what we do we just teach solid bible doctrines there and we also teach people about identity of israel we teach them how to live we teach them about the ten commandments we teach them about the government of god loving government from the top to the down from the top down you know which is for the benefits of those being ruled by that government what a privilege to be part of god's government <laughs> something some obviously thought it's it's a reward oh no it's a privilege to serve god's people not to lie to people who look up to you to see those people happen to see that their problems resolved to see that you have helped the people we were just barely barely registered when we under the leadership of one of our of our chief counselor in malawi we just jumped to help people who were affected by that uh, i can't remember it was flood and i can't remember those the, the name of that silly uh, in the name of the uh, tornado or whatever I find it so silly to be honest with you that you know people give such a lovely names to tornado so you have tornado Cathy, tornado tornado el nino tornado i don't know it's so silly the world in which we live i guess one of these days people are going to call it peter and paul and christ and mary magdalene and all that stuff how silly that is that a destructive power is being named would give us such a lovely name but i guess I guess some people can only distinguish between tornadoes when they have those different names but in any case that's the light to jump and to help and those of you who have problem with the sabbath do not have problem with the sabbath things happen there was a church member here his prospective member as well an electrician sometimes in winter the, the the conduits the public conduits simply cannot sustain the frost and 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 and, 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 and snowing and then and elements and i said to him look he would ask me a few times he said it's a sabbath but he says this village has been cut off with electricity should i go and help yes i said to him and i said don't ever ask me again every time there is a humanitarian need every time there is a need to rescue human lives even if animal lives run and do it can you imagine a village with a horrible you know horrible winter day dark and no electricity what should people with small children do what should people with babies do what should elderly people do i said don't even ask me again i said run and help run and help and do it with with peaceful conscience because you're not doing anything wrong the law of god the, the spirit of the law with the hope of israel keeps by the way the spirit of the law says that if an accident happens on the sabbath do it do it and help because you're not working for money you're doing to save someone's life and let me tell you one, one more thing friends when it comes to animals the same is the attitude and those who help i've never said it in english i said it in serbian those who abuse animals you'll face the judgment of god you will face the judgment if there are any who hears this and abuses animals you'll face the judgment of god because god created all those animals for our fun for our amusement for our love he didn't create those animals to be tortured tormented and so on yes i'm telling you this as part of the government of god i just will i want to hear what what are the government of god or those who think they're government of god are going to proclaim this i'm proclaiming this 
And somebody said, oh, yes, because you love cats. Yes, I love cats. I love dogs. I love birds. I love the whole wildlife. Because God created it for you and for me. Yes, there is government in hope of Israel. Do not be deceived. Yes, there is. The fact that we are not trumpeting to the world, look, we are the government of God. We have this, that, and the other. It doesn't mean that we are not the government of God. We don't trumpet it because we have no need to trumpet it. We are family all, and we consult as family and friends. Please go to Isaiah chapter 11. We are speaking about Jesus Christ. There is a direct correlation between Christ and a human ruler that is to rule under God. Of course, that was all referring to David, but now today, in these days, day and age, does refer to those of you who have any responsibility to rule people of God. Isaiah 11 verse 1, There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge, and of the fear of the Lord. His delight is in the fear of the Eternal, and he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes, nor decide by the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his loins, and faithfulness the belt of his waist. Now, brethren, we are reading about the head of the church. Head of me, head of all of you, head of all the spiritual organism which the church of God is, wherever it is, whoever makes it, uh, it's always made only by those who are led by the Spirit of God, who have the Spirit of God. Because the Bible says that those who don't have the Spirit of God, they're not His, they're not Christ's. So this is Jesus Christ. He is the root to which we, as the wine, are attached. And as we read some of these characteristics of Jesus Christ as a just ruler, they also must be considered by us as humans in terms of what God is doing in this point in time. A just ruler brings light to the darkness. <laughs> yes, indeed. Hope of Israel has brought light to the darkness amidst a terrible corruption. To such a point that the false evangelist and his co-workers have vowed to destroy hope of Israel. <laughs> Speak about the fear of God, brethren. <laughs> to destroy. Well, if God allows us to be destroyed, fine. Then it means that we should not exist. But so far, as we speak of now, the gospel is being preached over our radio to all the world. The statistics has shown that there are parts of the world that never the gospel message, as far as I am aware, has ever reached, like the capital of uh, the capital of Isle, uh, of Iceland, the capital of Albania, the capital of Slovenia, etc., etc., etc. And so, uh, to destroy, <laughs> what an intent, you know. So they think that they are called, obviously, by God to destroy something. That's so funny. And of course, as they spread lies and just are involved in witchcraft, what kind of blessings can those people expect? I asked some people, you know, can you explain to me? I asked our Terry, Terry Nelson, who is in charge of Africa, appointed by me, by the way, and with my blessing, speaking of the hierarchical government of God, I said, what's wrong with it? Well, he said, you know, as far as I understand, those people think they have a second chance. Oh, I said, no, there is no second chance, my friends. The Bible speaks about those who have been called now to Christian life. It's a calling. It's not your choice. It's a calling. You can choose to respond to the calling or not to respond, but it's a choice from God. 
he chooses whom he wants in his church. So uh, those who have been called now, their calling is done. This is their chance for salvation. They have no other. And we read here that a just ruler brings light to the darkness, like the light of the morning, the rising of the sun. So what part the church plays in this regard? And more specifically, what part do you play personally, friends? Well, if you go to 1 Kings chapter 12 and verse 7. 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 7. Solomon had died. Solomon has died and his son Rehoboam has replaced his father and he is wondering how he would continue to rule from his father and he receives some, I would say, good advice. Now Jeroboam, the other one, the other pretendant to the throne, came, comes back from Egypt, sees an opportunity here to make some corrections, perhaps, and goes to Rehoboam and makes some suggestions. And now Rehoboam consults the elders who stood before his father and Solomon and he said, uh, how do you advise me to answer these people? First Kings 12, verse 7. And they spoke to him, saying, if you will be a servant to those people, oh servant. Here is another attitude that uh, all those who want to be part of the government of God, or rather true government of God, should have a service-oriented attitude. If you will be a servant to these people today and serve them and answer them and speak good words to them, then they will be your servants forever. Now these further elements, brethren, of godly leadership, and essentially, and essentially he was being counseled to be a good shepherd to God's people. Here is another qualification, if you want, for godly leadership. And I was so proud, in a sense, so happy to see that when that tornado struck Malawi, our members took initiative to relieve and do what they can do to relieve a disaster. Without waiting for a command from me to do it or anybody else to do it. And that's exactly the point of godly leadership, brethren. Godly leadership is there to teach you and educate you to make your own informed decisions in situations in which you may find yourself. You know, an elder, a leader, is not here to run your lives and micromanage it to the smallest detail, not at all. An elder is here to be consulted, you know, if there is a dilemma somebody has, a problem somebody has. Elder is here to point you, the government of God is there to point you to the Word of God. And to teach you and tell you to interpret that word and consult that word all the time. That's what the government of God is all about. It's not there to run your lives. I know some people would love to be, you know, to have somebody to run their lives so they have no responsibility. Oh, no. Oh, no. The responsibility we all will have in the world to come is to rule over the world and rule over the nations. And therefore, we have to qualify and we have to teach, and uh, well, to teach one day, and we have to learn in this life how to do it in the world tomorrow. So therefore, you know, all of those that I'm just saying are aspects that a good shepherd should have in his heart and in his mind as he relates to God's people. So these thoughts, of course, take us straight to Christ's words to his disciples, which he had Two of the disciples, James and John, asking him, Can I sit on the right hand and he sit on the left hand with you in the kingdom? And Jesus Christ responded, as we all well know, Whoever desires to be great among you shall be your servant, and whoever desires to be first shall be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. These words, brethren, require action, and Christ's likeness has to be a central focus for both the church and for the individuals that comprise the church. And there is no exception. So the government of God is not there to run your lives. The government of God is to direct you as a good shepherd, lead you to good pasture 
as the prophets would say the government of god is there to direct you that's all the government of god cannot live a godly life for you it cannot live christ-like life for you the government of god can, can teach you and will teach you how to build christ-like character and that's all and how to make wise Bible-based decisions in your lives. That's what the government of God serves for. Not to run anybody's life. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. Philippians 2 chapter, chapter 2 verse 5. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Brethren, what an incredible statement for us as human beings to consider. But this is the incredibly important part of who we are as individuals and who we are as a church the mind of christ it is the mind of the father christ and the father are the same verse 6 who christ being in the form of god did not consider it robbery to be equal with god and this is rather incredible circumstance to consider we've got these two beings in the godhead they're both God, and one would become the Father, and one would become the Son. One was the spokesman, the Word, and he was God eternal. He existed by the one who became the Father, and they were one in all things. And one decides at the will of the Father to divest himself of all of that to become a human being just like us. Now think about attitude, about the attitude that is involved here on behalf of the one who became Jesus Christ. Verse 7. But made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bond servant, and coming in the likeness of men, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Brethren, let this mind be in you. This ties back into some of those comments about leadership and how men shall rule verse 9 therefore god has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name so he raised him from the dead he sits now at the right hand of the father and all dominion is going to be given unto his hand in the future verse 10 that at the name of jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth and that every tongue should confess that jesus christ is the lord to the glory of God the Father. Now tie in verse 5 now with verse 10 and 11. Verse 5 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Verse 10, That at the time, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow, of those in heaven and of those on earth, and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus is the Lord, to the glory of God the Father. To the glory of God the Father, Frederick. Brethren, do you think that the government of God is there to proclaim the glory of God the Father? And that refers to all of us, by the way, be we in any position in the church or not. But to the glory of God the Father occurs more times than we perhaps can just, you know, remember from what we read in the scripture. So, if we are to develop the mind of Jesus Christ, there is an aspect here of interfacing with humankind that somehow there is a way in which the name and the understanding of Jesus Christ, and of course, through him, the Father, is made known to, his, to this particular world, the world in which we live. Colossians 1, Colossians 1, verse 19. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell. And by him to reconcile all things to himself, by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Now this is a whole concept of, brethren, if you see reconciliation, bringing humankind into a relationship through him to the Father. Verse 21, And you, who once were alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he has reconciled. It is one of these situations that we all would come at differently, better as far as our mind is concerned, but to understand what God has done for us, it is something so great and so enormous that the worthless human beings have reconciliation through Christ to the Father. Verse 22, In the body of his flesh, through death, to present you holy and blameless 
and above reproach in his sight. Now this is written to the church, brethren. There is something very big, 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 big going on here. Verse 23, if indeed you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast, and are not moved away from the hope of the gospel, which is at the same time the hope of Israel, with the hope of the gospel which you heard, which was preached to every creature under heaven, of which I, Paul, became a minister, bread in the gospel of God. Gospel of Jesus Christ is at the same time gospel about the kingdom of Israel coming back, being restored. Keep that in mind. It's inseparable. The establishment of the kingdom of God does imply, does involve, does include, does mean the restoration of the kingdom of Israel. That is what is written in the scriptures. I'm sorry for all those who think that that truth is not important, that the house of Israel is something racist, oh my, really, that the, I'm sorry for all of you because you have a pitiful understanding of the Bible theology. The main theme, the main nation, the main history of national history is of Israel in all of the Bible in the New Jerusalem I don't see the name of the gates named by whatever nation I see it named by each tribe of Israel so from the very Genesis 49 and the inception of the beginning of the house of Israel all the way up to Revelation I see only Israel 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 everywhere some people bother about it. Some people just feel so sorry about it. Well, or, or, or so wretched and, 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 and despondent about it. I don't know why. Jesus Christ says in the Bible that we will know the truth, and true truth shall make us free. Don't we all? Don't we all want to be free people? How was it? How was it that phrase in America? Give me liberty or give me death. Oh well, fine, fine. We can say the same. We Christians. Today, give us liberty, which will, you know, give us the truth that will set us free. Give us liberty or give us death. What's the, that's exactly what the European powers are planning to do, you know. Very soon, brethren, they're planning to be killing all of those who want the truth that sets us free. Free from their bad rulership and satanic and demonic government. In fact, the whole book of Colossians focuses on Jesus Christ as the head of his church, and the message of the book is that our lives should reflect that priority, the priority of Jesus Christ. Verse 24, I now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church. Now, so as we discuss, you see Christ and what Christ does in reconciling all things by himself to him, the church has a part to play. Verse 25, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God, which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Just like I have no doubts that the leadership of hope of Israel was given to some of us to fulfill the word of God and to set some people free from some people from false Christians government and some people free from false Christian doctrines. Now in this relationship, brethren, remember how wonderful and great the answers are that we have been given. The rest of the world is absolutely struggling, struggling in some of these basic things, but God has given them to us. And we have understanding that the world does not have those understanding, but that understanding increases our responsibility to interface with this world. Verse 26, the mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. Now there are a number of things that we could say are a mystery because they're spiritual in nature and the world does not understand them. But there is one prime mystery that Paul is talking about and here at least, and that has been revealed to the saints. Verse 27, To them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of the, this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. But in the mystery that Christ 
is that Christ lives his life in human beings. There is a connection between Christ living his life in us, the church, and salvation going to all peoples. It is a mystery that Christ lives his life in us. Verse 28, he, him we preached and preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. To this end I also labor, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. You see, the working of Christ's life in a human is a mystery, but it's not to us. The mystery has been revealed to his saints. Why, brethren, why? Well, first, let's return to a just ruler bringing light to darkness. John 12. John 12, verse 28. Father, glorify your name. Here we come to this concept again of glorifying God. Then a voice came from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Therefore the people who stood by and heard it said that it had thundered. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice did not come because of me, but because for your sake. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. And I, if I am lifted up from, uh, lifted up from the earth, will draw all peoples to myself and all those true prophets if there are some and there will be as the bible says all the true prophets brethren will never direct you to themselves but to very jesus christ all the true preachers will not direct people and pastors will not, not direct people to themselves but to the jesus christ and his example and his living example all the true preachers and prophets remember it always brethren how to distinguish between true preachers and prophets and false ones the true ones will direct you to the father uh, to jesus christ the false ones will direct you to themselves so in verse 32 he's talking about his crucifixion his death and resurrection and he's talking about all peoples being drawn to him verse 33 then he said signifying by what death he would die the people answered him we have heard from the lord that the christ which is the messiah remains forever and how can you say the son of man must be lifted up who is this son of man then jesus said to them a little while longer the light is with you walk while you have the light lest darkness overtake you he who walks in darkness does not know where he is going the world is in darkness brethren does not know where it is going talking to the disciples he said in verse 36 while you have the light believe in the light that you may also that you may become sons of light these things jesus spoke and departed and was hidden from them now we started with a just ruler if the ruler rules justly in the fear of god it is like the rising of the sun in the morning the bringing of light to darkness we have been asked to be sons of light oh yes indeed glorify means full of glory and honor to magnify god is to be glorified part of our responsibility when we come down to it is to glorify the father and the name of the father human beings are to be in a relationship with christ because john 1 says christ is light such that they become living witnesses of that light it is a powerful concept because this is not something we put under a bushel it's not something that you do quietly in a corner this obviously has implications for salvation to the world and that's exactly why because of this still task we all have i've been calling on these scattered these fragmented christians if possible to put their differences aside and to unify around jesus christ and uh, still participate in the end time war in the end time not war well it's a spiritual war indeed but in the end time work as for us the hope of israel we have been doing indeed our 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 task we have been fulfilling worthily and we have been fulfilling it diligently ever since our inception in fact as soon as we decided to become uh, hope of israel 
as soon as we had to move on, we immediately activated our internet radio. Hope of Israel worldwide, indeed. So now let's take in action, let's consider the church. Let's consider the hope of Israel, falsely accused of not having the Philadelphian hierarchical government lie. Abraham is the foundational to the church. And, you know, you can talk about the church and separate. You cannot talk about the church as separated from Abraham. No. And if you're going to talk about Abraham, you must ultimately end up with the church and beyond. Because Abraham is foundational. He is the father of the faithful, the father of all those who believe. Paul is saying that in Romans chapter 4, said exactly that about Abraham. So it's bringing Abraham into the picture as far as the church is concerned. So now let's go back into Genesis 22 and verse 15. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven. That's verse 15. Verse 17. Blessing I'll bless you and multiplying I'll multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore and your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. In other words, brethren, this is the promise of Abraham's descendants becoming a great nation. Oh, indeed. In your seed, verse 18, in singular, in your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. So there is an association between the promises of Abraham to Abraham and blessings to all nations, brethren. We have to acknowledge the importance of Israel in terms of God's relationship with humankind. But here is one spiritual dimension I want to point out to you. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Galatians chapter 3, verse 6. Galatians 3, 6. Just as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness, therefore know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. Which means that in the physical nation of Israel is very much a part of God's blessing to other nations. And now we come into the realm of the church. This can only apply to the church, those who are of faith. And you have to be called to be part of that category. As I said, because Christian life, true Christian life is a calling from God. It's not something you volunteer for. Verse 8. And the scripture Foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you all, all the nations shall be blessed. God fully intended for the Gentiles, brethren, to be called, and that, that term can be better rendered as all nations. In any way, what God is saying to Abraham plays into salvation for humankind. Verse 9. So then those who are uh, of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. Look at verse 14. That the blessing of Abraham might come, up, come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now back there with David, in 2 Samuel 23, 5, verse 5, it references salvation and the covenant. And these things tie together. Verse 16, and now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say, and to seeds as to many, but as one, and to your seed who is Christ. Now, uh, Genesis 22, of course, uses the word seed in singular, not seeds in plural. And through Christ, all the nations will be blessed, brethren. All the nations are offered salvation through Christ. The central reason for God's creating of man is to create to himself or for himself a spiritual family, you see. So everything that uh, has been happening on earth in these last about almost 6,000 years relates to the development of a family of God, of God's family. It's worthy to know that these concepts in regard to Jesus Christ are written to the church, brethren. Verse 26, For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. Now that cannot refer to anybody else except those who make up the spiritual body of the church. Verse 27, For as many as you, 
as were baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. Now this is the mystery of Christ being able to live his life in a human being. Verse 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Jesus Christ. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now in your seed, that is human beings with Jesus Christ living his life in them, all the nations shall be blessed. You see, the physical promises of multiplication of descendants now became the foundation of a spiritual family. Did you realize what I said? The physical promises of multiplication of descendants now become the foundation of a spiritual family. And through Abraham, a family was created. Now we build on that and we build a spiritual family. All the sons of God, brethren, are spiritual family. Please go, uh, well, we could read Galatians, we could read uh, Ephesians. Well, let's read all of them after all. In Galatians chapter chapter 4, Galatians 4, 1. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of he is master of all. But he's under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the Father. Even so we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. And living under the penalty of death, brethren, from having transgressed that law, verse 6, and because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. So it makes the connection to the one who supplies the Holy Spirit to make you a son. We are connected, brethren, to the Father in a family relationship. And thus, the government of God in hope of Israel is basically a family model. Verse 7, therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. That's God's promise. This, thus, the church is not a, you know, standalone item. It's not a group of people who are better than anybody else. There are those who are the elect, and uh, there are those who are not. And if you are not you can never be one of the elect in any case it's a great system this church god's church does not stand alone as better than anybody else the church is part of god's developing program the entire book of ephesians could be read in this light the colossians is addressing the head of the church and ephesians ephesians more the body of the church what it's a powerful message indeed because God has this plan laid out well in advance in Ephesians 1 verse 4. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Now, it's easy, of course, to read that we are to be holy and without blame before him in love. But, brethren, it's not an option. Because who do we represent? Who is living his life in us? Who is holy and blameless? Verse 5, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, so the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. So brethren, glory. Glory, these terms just keep appearing. We're talking about Christ, the seed, being a blessing to all nations and grace is an incredible blessing that is part of being chosen by God and grace was better you see extended to us the concept is bigger verse 7 in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence 
having made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he purposed in himself now of course there there are a number of mysteries but we will stay with the one uh, we have identified today that's the mystery of christ living his life in a human being is that purpose just as a benefit for me that i have been called out of this world and granted this knowledge at this time or am i expected to accept the responsibility which that goes with it brother verse 10 that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times he might gather together in one all things in christ both which are heaven in heaven and which are on earth in him now this now goes from the personal aspect of being called and being given forgiveness uh, at least to grace being extended and so on into the context of christ gathering all nations in one the plan is a family plan for all humankind brethren verse 11 in him also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all this according to the counsel of his will, will that he will first trusted christ should be to the praise of his glory in you in him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth the gospel of your salvation in whom also having believed you were sealed with the holy spirit of promise who is the guarantee for our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory you know you cannot separate the praise of his glory from what god is doing with those who make up the church but you know those who have been called according to the purpose of his will verse 19 and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power you see brethren the working of his mighty power is living a life in a human being that produces holiness and being without blame oh yes it can be achieved it is hard work yes but uh, what is the plan and purpose here verse 20 which he worked in christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places so that power that took the dead body of christ resurrected it and gave it life and glorified it so it could sit back at the right hand of the father is the same power that works in you and you were called and you were submitted to that calling to allow this power to work in you so that all things God that all things could be you know brought together in one under Christ well that's all humankind ready verse 21 far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age but also in that which is to come so there is no other power greater than the power that works in somebody who is having Christ live his life in them. Verse 22. And he put all things to under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church. So God keeps bringing the church into this picture in verse 22, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Now this section starts with he chose us in him before the foundation of the world now we end up with the church with the idea of all things brought together uh, all things brought together under god for the glory of under god for the glory of god well you know clearly the church rather is a developing role developing role between the physical between the physical nation and the spiritual family you know it was a physical nation between the physical nation and the spiritual nation it was indeed well it was a physical nation that is true, true but in the end after the resurrection in the end after the uh, after the 
after the resurrection. Uh, indeed, it was a, you know, physical man, and in the end, after the resurrection, there is a spiritual family, and in between, there is this church. Now, it is a tool that God uses to develop his plan, his plan of salvation for humankind, of course. Now Christ is clearly the head of his church, his body, and in Christ all nations are to be blessed. So we cannot separate uh, we cannot separate what we do from the blessings that is to go go to all nations. Now because of its thorough seed through Christ that all nations are to be blessed now we cannot separate what we do from the blessing that is to go to all nations and because it is through the seed through Christ that all nations are to be blessed and Jesus and Jesus Christ works through his body the church it is not se separate from the purpose well if you just speak about the church so uh, we can read all kinds of things and uh, now well I'm trying to kind of bring this into some logical connection you see Satan in this world brother he has turned things upside down so here we are as God's people with Christ living in us he's living his life trying to turn things the right way up again you know the husband is the connector between Christ and his wife that's the way family governance works when a husband functions properly and uses his authority properly in the hierarchical structure he leads his wife into a stronger relationship with Christ and if you are in a relationship with Christ, you are in a relationship with the Father. That is the way it works. Now, the organic nature of godly governments is not, is actually, the organic nature is to connect man to God in every aspect of hierarchical structure yeah. where its authority, you know, is there appropriate. It must accomplish that task. We are to help connect people to God, brethren. Human government usually connects man to man. You get away from this style and you start to get every uh, wrong uh, things being inserted and they don't know God, but this is what God happens, what happens in the world. Godly governance produces a body of light. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. 2 Corinthians 4, 6. For it is the God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So Christ is the head of the body, the church, is God who has commanded the light to shine out of darkness. It is not our light, it's God's light as we allow God to work in us. And we know that Halal, who became one, the one who became Satan, was a light bringer, not the source of the light. So he was to bring that light, but he began to take and appropriate that to himself. That was that he was the source of that light and completely turned things better and upside down. Verse 7, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. You see, brethren, the glory is to go to the Father, to the Son, not to us. And this physical weak body makes this life Christ-like, you know, this life Christ-like with a mind that is like the mind of Jesus Christ, that is power 
a powerful witness that comes from God. Verse 8, we are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always caring about the body that dying of Jesus Christ, that the life of Jesus Christ may be manifested in our body. For he who lives are always delivered to death of Christ, for Christ's sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. Brethren, Christ is living his life in us. It's the baptismal ceremony repeated on a daily basis, taking aspects of self and bearing that, killing it, getting rid of it. Verse 12, so then death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believe, and therefore I spoke, we are also, we also believe, and therefore speak, knowing that he who has raised up Jesus, the Lord Jesus, will also raise up his, raise, raise us up with Jesus, and we present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that grace having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Brethren, that grace is not just for our personal benefit, it is to be brought into a relationship with God. That grace is extended to us so that all nations can be blessed by God through Jesus Christ. So, as the hope of Israel, as the church, we do know our role. The church knows what God is doing in terms of family, and the development of a family. The church knows the role of Israel, physical Israel, and also spirit-led Israel. We have all that knowledge for a purpose, and that purpose obviously is something that is eternal. This is one of the initial aspects of God making salvation available to all humankind in Jeremiah 32, verse 37. Jeremiah 32, 37, Behold, I'll gather them out of all countries where I have driven them in my anger, in my fury, and in great wrath. Of course, speaking about the second exodus. I'll bring them back to this place, and I will cause them to dwell safely. So that restoration of the house of Israel, you see. They shall be my people. Well, the restoration of the house of Israel is inseparable, brethren, from the true gospel. They shall be my people, verse 38, and I'll be their God. Then I'll give them one heart and one way, that they may fear me forever for the good of them and their children after them. And I'll make an everlasting covenant with them that I'll not burn away from doing them good. But I'll put my fear in the hearts so that they will not depart from me. So God grants them his spirit and the covenant they knew, brethren, is there where other previously becomes a spiritual covenant, a new covenant, and the covenant that the church is built upon. Israel, in its restored condition, is to do what the church is now doing. This is not for Israel's benefit, of course. This is to glorify the name of the great God among the Gentiles, amongst all people, but it starts with the restoration of the house of Israel once again. They are given God's spirit, a heart of flesh instead of a heart of stone, and what is the difference between them and the church today, brethren? None. Because Israel restored will have a working model as we, the church, the hope of Israel, have a working model. The family. The family of God on this earth. So, what we are doing here today is the basis for the spiritual restoration of Israel to take God's truth to all nations. The church. Hope of Israel, if you wish, built on the model of the God family, becomes a model for restored Israel, the church of the future for all nations. Indeed, a living example of God family. In the book Mystery of the Ages of Herbert Armstrong, in, on page 43, Who and What is God? He writes, The word at the time of John 1.1 1, 1 was not yet the Son of God, but he was with God, and he also was God. They were not yet father and son, but they were the God kingdom. The family is composed now of God the Father and Jesus Christ the Son, His Son, and many begotten humans who already now are begotten sons of God, forming the Church of God. So we have got the Kingdom of God and the Church of God. That family aspect, the God family, is 
vitally important, wrote Herbert Armstrong on page 43, Who and What is God? Brethren, there is nothing new in what we are trying to focus on in terms of the way God's governance in the church should be. Absolutely nothing. It is the family model, the God family model. We want to develop an organization which enhances governance as the marriage model should do. So what is your part? Are you a passive bystander? The ministry has a part, but we understand how essential it is for the ministry to get certain things got done but we have so long worked off a wrong model sadly more authoritarian that's shepherding that's very obvious and in god's church and i say when i say god's church i mean the spiritual organism has to change we did not step around hierarchy we cannot do that from the word of god oh no we cannot because in ephesians chapter 3 sorry chapter 4 Verse 11 says, He himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. And there is delegated authority within the body. For what purpose? To make the person who has the delegated authority more important? Well, no, brethren. Verse 12. For equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. You see? So, this is all given by God so that we can do what? So we can be as a body. This is addressed to the church, that, that witness that God wants for this world. Verse 14, that he should no longer be, that we should no longer be children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of man, in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. You see, Satan knows his days are number, uh, numbered and he's angry and he's stirred up. And brethren, But you don't have to worry about that because verse 15, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love so once again the question are you a passive bystander every part brethren must supply something to the body and we work together but if you're here you're going to have to accept the challenge to supply what the body needs and that is spiritual and i believe that all of us have known all along that at some point in time we are going to give, well, no, we're going to give certainly all the time, but we're going to have to address things about ourselves that we don't want to in order to be part of the Bride of Christ arrayed in fine linen. There are things that we work to on overcoming. We have all known that there were things that we're going to have to do. Being human, we will do them just before the end. And there are things that you and I have to address and now is the time each of us has the responsibility to aggressively develop the new man verse 17 this i say therefore and testify the lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the gentiles walk in the futility of their mind don't walk as the rest of the gentiles walk because that kind of a witness is that is what well it's, it doesn't glorify the name of god Verse 18, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their hearts. Now you see, brethren, you now see, you now hear, you are responsible to lift your life onto a, shall I say, higher spiritual level. Verse 19, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanness with greediness but you have not so learned christ if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in jesus that you put up put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the seedful lusts and be renewed in the spirit of your mind so the question what do you contribute to the body brethren it's a spiritual body 
a living organism, you supply spiritual life to the body. Verse 24, and you, that you put on the new man, which was created according to God in the righteous, in true righteousness and holiness. So submitting one to another carries enormous implications, but that's exactly how the true government works. It means, you know, that we must be living witnesses of God's family indeed. Now in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 and 2, Therefore be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also loved us, and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. So, brethren, we have to contribute to the body by being imitators of God and dear children. We have to walk as children of light. Sometimes, you know, we have to deal with human relationships in order to get into a right relationship with God. Is there anyone here you can stand for, you cannot stand. Well, please work it out, reconcile, deal with it, roll up the sleeves, accept the challenge. If this is of God, no man can destroy it, and it will be blessing, it will be blessed, and we will go forward. And then, of course, remember, we are God's family. God raised us for that. He wanted to bring and make his own family. We are in the process of growing before we we all who are baptized will be born again at Christ's very return. And then the plan of God continues to develop. Yes, hope of Israel is God's family. Yes, we do have hierarchical government, but that hierarchical government simply reflects the nature of God family, of us being God family. We submit to one another, we imitate Christ in all things that we do.